The GTR Reamer holder. This is made by Gratan Rifles. Gratan Tooling. So I like this reamer holder a lot. When I first started using it, I wasn't real sure about it. Uh, but after some experience and some time under some time with it, uh, I feel very I actually like it a lot. <clears throat> this tool is not for speed. This uh, this kind of forces you to go slow and steady in terms of depth of cut and all that stuff. And I'll kind of explain why here in a second. So I just got to clean it up. I just got done using it actually. So what you got here is a dead center, uh, essentially, um, with a machined aluminum collar on here. So I'm not sure if he makes these centers. I kind of doubt it. He probably buys these. and then, But I know he's making these, um, all the other parts here. The screws, I'm not sure. I know he's got a Swiss screw machine, so he may be, he may be making these screws as well. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a very simple design. It's uh, no frills, really. Uh, you've got a <clears throat> set screw here that uh, holds this section of the collar onto the dead center. Obviously, the dead center is going to go into your tailstock. In this case, this is an MT4. He offers these an MT2 and MT3, I believe, and maybe a straight shank. I'm, I'm not real sure on that. Uh, but my lathe takes the MT4 style Morse taper in my tailstock. So that's why I got this one. Very beefy, rigid tool. Um, uh, very high quality, but I, I, like I said before, a very simple design. And then um, the other half of it is just simply another aluminum collar with three uh, through holes for your set screws, for your thumb screws, and a through hole there, and then another set screw here. And that one actually secures your reamer into the holder, right? So that comes all the way through and comes out this side to secure your uh, reamer or your cutter or whatever you're, you're running in this thing. Now, the way Greg says to use this <clears throat> is you take your reamer. <clears throat> in this case, I've got a brand new 7PRC that I just got in from PTG. Brand new 7 PRC, guys. Side note, I own this reamer and I have very little backlog right now. So um, I know this is a hot cartridge. So uh, if you're willing to give me a shot, uh, I've been doing this 10 years. I've got hundreds of uh, extremely happy customers and I've built a uh, whole bunch of 7 PRCs and 6.5 PRCs and stuff, 300s. So anyway, uh, shameless plug there. Uh, see the stuff in the description below for to get a hold of me, to contact me, to uh, um, fit and chamber your barrel. So anyway, the reamer itself goes right into that hole, the 7 16 inch uh, standard hole for a standard size reamer shank. Now the way Greg says to use this, <clears throat> So reamers all have flats on them, and that's kind of the traditional way you do it. You secure it on the flat so that it doesn't spin and stuff like that. Well, in this case, <clears throat> you're, uh, he suggests highly to actually secure it onto the high spot of the uh, shank there rather than the flat. And the idea behind this is that since there is n this is not a floating reamer holder in the sense of something in the back floating like a like a Manson or a uh, oh, uh, JGS makes them and some other guys make them the floating style that the entire holder floats kind of on a bearing system like this. Um, this one is different because it is not, is actually a rigid style um, just due to the fact that it's being held in your tailstock with a dead center at the back end there. So there's no way that there's uh, any movement in the back, so this does not float in a traditional manner. The um, caveat of that is you have to make sure that your <clears throat> tailstock is perfectly aligned with with the uh, bore of your your headstock. Uh, we're talking a couple tenths, you know, as long as you're within the couple tenths of uh, alignment, <clears throat> uh, you'll be good. But if your tailstock is high or low or off to one side or the other, 
that you're not going to get good results with this reamer holder. So, yeah, like I said, stick that in. And we're going to make sure that we're clamping on that round section as we uh, feed this in. So the back end of the reamer should be flush. Flush with the bottom back surface there. Something like that. And then, like I said, you just want to make sure that's uh, clamping on the higher spot of the reamer shank. And then he provides you with a nice uh, hex head wrench. So you'll just secure that on, good and tight. So you just get these three thumb screws started. And you want a little spring tension on them. And so there with a little spring tension, that's actually pulling the entire assembly down um, tight against the uh, dead center. And so as you can see, it does, <clears throat> the, three, the three screws do allow pivoting of the reamer so that it can follow a bore that may have a bit of a rainbow in it or something. But the back end is never, never moved. So that's why you need to make sure your, your tail stock is perfectly aligned with the bore, the center line of your bore, or your head stock, that is. Um, so then you'll use these. When I initially set it up, I will use these three screws to kind of align that, make sure this is entering the bore uh, as perfectly straight as possible. You can actually use these screws um, to uh, change the alignment of this reamer. So it'll pull it in or out as necessary. <clears throat> the only issue I ran into at first was being a little too aggressive. So I'm used to using um, floating reamer holders. Like I used to use a Manson in the old shop that I used to work for. And I've used the JGSs at the schools and things like that. And those allow one to actually be pretty aggressive with the reamer. You could go in a full hundred thousands per pass with no issues. However, you are potentially cutting an oversized bore due to the fact that that whole back end is actually floating around. Um, so pick your poison with that. I like this one because it actually kind of forces you to slow down. If you go in too much, um, if you get too much chip load on the inside the flutes, there's too much pressure and the thing actually does come loose. So, so you'll be feeding in, and all of a sudden you'll hear a snap, and that's all that is is the reamer coming loose of the uh, off of its set screw there, and then it'll spin, and then you know, oh shoot, I've been going too fast or, or too much uh, too much in feed there. Uh, you still run the lathe uh, slow. Uh, I get pretty good results with 140 RPM, um, but uh, as far as depth of cut, I can't get much more than like 30 thousandths once the uh, entire thing's uh, engaged. Once you get a full full cut on that so that actually again like i said it forces uh forces a guy to, to take his time and go slow with this so the level of precision that i offer my rifles in i mean that's kind of my whole thing uh this is certainly not a production shop you won't see cnc stuff here this is all manual machine all done by me a human being constantly checking everything at, at every stage of the, the game so so that's why I kind of, I've, it's grown on me. Uh, it does take a, a good extra, probably half hour or so per chamber. But who cares? Um, I'm not in a race here, so. And the, uh, the rifles all shoot excellent. So I, you know, can't, can't complain there. So there's not a whole lot else to really talk about. Um, so that's it. That's the Gratan rifles. Reamer holder. You can find him on the uh, the internet, Gratan. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for his website. I've bought a lot of tooling from Greg. It's always high quality stuff. I'm always impressed. I've made my own jig, but I've bought his bushings and his uh, indicating mandrel, uh, the bolt bore raceway reamers, and things like that. So, uh, really good uh, good outfit. I I, look, I have a lot of respect for Greg. Um, so anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, go ahead and uh, like this video if you like what you see, and uh, leave a comment if you're 
curious on this. Uh, if you've got a specific question on it, I'll try to answer those as best I can. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Uh, this is the kind of stuff you're going to see on here. The very high-end gunsmithing, uh, very high-end tooling. Um, anytime I have a chance, I'll give it a review like I'm doing here. And uh, yeah, uh, again, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.